That's why I didn't want to bring it up before, because first of all, surprise, but secondly, I don't play like the danger jackalope and stuff anymore. I'm not trying to get bodies for Sarah Yuja that badly. This is what it ended up as. And like the, the things that are like hard once per turn, you only play one of. But uh, and like this guy here, this is probably the worst card in the deck, but when it saves you when you see it late and it hurts you really bad when you see it early. Uh, four tuners ended up being the correct number to play. You want name diversity for Seriuja. You play six copies of Treasure Panda and Exodia. You play all seven cantrips if you can. You play all six get back pieces if you can. And you play three mallets. And honestly, like these wear arf thous may even be better being better off as reloads because of how powerful it is to just like dark factory back pieces and put them back in using a spell like mallet so that the panda can just go get them again and you just keep digging. And the goal is to just have Panda pull these four bricks out of your deck. The worst part about playing Exodia has always been that every time you draw a piece, it's a minus one. And between Riser to just dump the head and Union Carrier to get the head is plan B. Like, I, there's five other extra deck slots I didn't even use. There's a lot of times where, like, uh, Panda and Monk are on the board and you'll get, like, Water Spirit and you make this thing to just draw a couple of cards. Like... There's like nine different ways that you go through. Uh, I showed you how the char the charge warrior comes up. Turning Exodia Limb into Link Karibo, really funny. Uh, if you have the only normals left in your deck are a couple of Flame Bell Guards, Panda can get one, turn it into Link Karibo, Panda can get the other, and then Link Karibo, Flame Bell Guard, and two limbs can make your Seriuja. You can use your Panda to make Seriuja if you have a Monk or Panda in hand, because Seriuja can summon it. You saw the Traffic Ghost come up because it puts two pieces in the graveyard along with your Panda if you ever summon it. Or if you need to keep the panda, land for Linkus is just, whoops, that, but uh, lighter. Uh, that's just like the two pieces. And like, yeah, you, you don't need any of these. Although the formula of Synchron, I'd argue, is pretty necessary because that's like what really gets you going. Uh, but there are things like White Elephant's Gift. Uh, I believe Reload is, um, yeah, just a normal, like, these are only rares, but you could swap out the three upstarts for three reloads. You could swap out the three chicken games for like Toon Table. Because it's still just cantripping your deck. Like it's still just thinning your deck by a card and putting a spell in your graveyard. It's no different. It's just that Toon Table can't draw into Dark Factory. You would have to make sure that you're playing your Toon Tables before you're playing your Into the Voids. Before you're playing your Avarice. Stuff like that. Um, you could play Thunder Dragons, another deck thinner. It's a body, which is unfortunate because like you want to be getting spells in your graveyard for Treasure Panda, but there are budgetary options to playing this. You do not have to play these seven ultra rares to make it work. You do not need to be playing this ultra rare to make it work. This guy was only a super and that was a massive consistency boost to the deck. And uh, ultimately even Exodia's head somehow is only a super rare. Any thoughts? <laughs> no, I absolutely love this deck. Uh, I'm really glad that you you shared this these replays at the end. It the problem I have uh, the only thing I would question is that there's a lot of ultra rare gems I see there that I'm kind of only. Well, actually, it's not even true. I would play up Star Goblins in more decks. Yeah, uh, I've already got the terraforming. All seven of those ultras in the main deck. I play in yeah. every deck I can get away with. I would play the upstarts yeah. in the Ignister deck if I could, but access is swinging for eighty six. Yeah, you don't you don't want to give them life points. It's the only reason you can't play it. But no, no, actually, this is a this is a great deck. What kind of packs do I need to open to uh, obtain Exodia? Is that only in the master packs, or can I? No, is no. There a set for it? There's literally a set for like God cards and Exodia pieces. Oh, so okay, you could just easily chuck some gems into there. Yeah. And probably do sure. Craft the head what. and then open ten packs of the set, and you'll get all four limbs. They're commons. Are well, they commons anyway? Right, you, everyone's probably got like a million common. Gems. Mm. Do you, does it include the Dark Eruptions in that set as well? Uh, that I didn't check. I just crafted those. Those are in the Into the Void set. So when you craft your Into the Void, you can try and pull Dark Eruption. <laughs> ah, okay. This yeah. is really cool. Yeah, uh, obviously, if your opponent has any kind of interaction, uh, like impermanence or... Yes. I, I am, like, full disclosure, it looked nice in hindsight because I just thought it showed you three wins in a row. There was an awful lot of games that, like, I lost a coin flip and my opponent went break sword and I was like, or, uh, rusty, and I was like, okay, well, that's just going to be Fogblade on Treasure Panda. Surrender. Uh, yeah. I, I think, like, 
there was some games, and when when I was doing like my uh, dailies, because you have you can't surrender, so you have to actually like see it through as a loss. I was able to win three times in a row, two days in a row, because my opponents would play something like a Time Lord and pass their turn, and I'd be like, "Cool, I win." Like that that does happen, but. Like, in the interest of full disclosure, while I was grinding for those 10 wins, I probably played something close to 150 games with the deck. I, I had some really bad lists at first before I arrived on this one, but there was an uh, awful for... lot of, like, I lost a coin flip, surrender, start over. I lost a coin flip, surrender, start over. Like, just kept going for it. And then, like, activate Summoner Monk. Is there a response? There is. Surrender. Like, just just going for it until I actually had a duel that I could play it out. And then my opponent would friggin' surrender and I wouldn't get the Exodia win, and just, mm. so ah, it, it, right. that's the That's the warning with this deck, is it's kind of a bit of a highlight reel, uh, as opposed to a competitive ladder deck. Yes, like I said, in gold, if you're four wins away from gold two, and you lose a game, you stay four wins away from gold two. Same with, even in gold one, getting up to plat five. So you absolutely could play this deck and get to plat with it, no doubt in my mind. Getting to plat one with it, but that strategy is suicidal. You'll end up back in gold in 10 minutes. But actually playing out each game and like playing more than one turn, I can tell you from when I was using it for my dailies, does work out. Yes, your summoner monk gets like Valored and your opponent gets a turn, but I still ended up winning a lot of those by just summoning Treasure Panda on the following turn and going for it. 1% win rate, where did you get that from? Is there like a, an API that you can... uh, I, I'm just exaggerating. I'm being hyperbolic. The win, oh, rate, right, yeah. the win rate of this brilliant. deck, the win rate of this, this list was much lower, but the final list of this, the win rate is 78% minus the odds they have a hand trap. But I was able okay. to, I was able to get the consistency up to an obnoxiously high number. This is a cheap deck to build, right? This deck is amazingly cheap to build, uh, unless... You are saving your ultra rare tokens for non generic cards, which is fair. Not everyone wants to use their ultra rare tickets on an upstart goblin. You should, but not everyone yeah, wants I, to. Those are where your ultra rare gems are best spent, where the cards are only available in the master jewel, where you're pulling against a list of like 8,000 cards. So, to those at home who don't know, this is my homie Treasure Panda, Indian to Panda. He can banish up to three spells or traps from your graveyard face down. Spoiler alert, he's never banishing more than one. Special summon a vanilla from your deck with the same number of stars. So by playing Upstar Goblin, I could get Flame Pal Guard. And by playing Into the Void, I can get the right arm of the Forbidden One. I guess it's the left arm, but it doesn't matter. Really, it's just Formula Synchron. Hey, chicken game. That's another draw. Is Chicken Game also an Ultra Rare? Yes. Yeah, so oh, is Terraforming. <laughs> I said, this deck is, is quite expensive if you... All of a sudden, you yeah. sold me on this, like, small family trip and told me it's going to cost me nothing. Now, to, like, you can play, play you, stuff like Tomb Table of Contents instead and Wonder Wands instead. There are super rares you can use to substitute. White Elephant's Gift is, like, a normal, common thing you could play. Like, you could use less good versions of Upstart Goblin and still win a great number of games that way, but... <laughs> Treasure Panda is not once per turn, and it is ridiculous. How far you, Joe? Oh, yes. Yeah, this deck is bank. You lied to me. You said this was just ridiculously to build. This like... You can play this super budget, and it'll just take you twice as long to get one of your wins, and who cares? Surrender until you get a hand that has the win. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a way to do it. It's not great to climb that way. Well, you're in player one. Doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, if you can't lose games, you just want to get the achievement. Yeah, Sarah Yuja just gives me another treasure panda. That's nice. I needed the limbs, so go get the limbs. <laughs> traffic ghost. And then play <laughs> Dark Hunter. The neck and then traffic ghost. <laughs> that's just like rubbing it in your opponent's face. Like, oh, by the way, yeah, opponent played traffic ghost. And there's the boy. Exodia obliterates, and that's going to be a win for Dan. Imagine losing to Exodia in a ranked format. That's hilarious. <laughs> now, that was a very bad list. White Elephant's Gift, Danger, Tsuchinoko, terrible cards. Oh, that was an FTK as well. You FTK'd it. Oh, yeah. 
I, I, I somehow, for some reason, thought the opponent went first. I came to you after you came with Exodia. Of I, course, I, I, think, to play Exodia. I think I'll just go through these other two and make it one long YouTube video. Sure, sure. And then we'll get your last two. So yeah. this is a slightly better, but not final version of the deck. But this shows off more of the creative ideas where I was like, okay, I don't need to do any of this, but if I do, I'll win more often. Like, instead of, like, a 40% chance, this one was, like, closer to 65. Yeah, it's like, all or nothing. Like, Spellbook of Knowledge, way better than White Elephant's Gift, because it can send Summoner Monk, too. Ah, uh, okay, so you just increase the odds. Seven win. Yeah, okay. I, I, he, J J Vix remembers. I actually ended up, like... in When I had to do my three duels for the daily, I was using this Exodia deck to do it, and I ended up getting a three win streak two days in a row with the Exodia deck. <laughs> That is quite hilarious. The final version of this deck is actually nuts. Uh, <laughs> so, Summoner Monk getting Panda gives me four more stars I can use. And I added this Water Spirit because I wanted to be able to make Sarayuja more easily by having two different names on my tuners. Like I said, there was little optimizations I was making along the way, but... Are you going to try... Do you reckon you could get to Plat 1 playing this deck? Uh, yes, but it would take, like, all month. Ah, it's, yeah, it'd probably not be that fun for you. It'd be like playing the burn deck in the X. The, the yeah. win rate is pretty, like, I definitely could get to plat with it, no sweat. I, I would hit, I would be able to get from, like, rookie two to plat five in a couple of hours with this deck, no problem at all. But once you're, like, in plat and everyone has, like, the Ash Blossom for this Magical Mallet right here, like, that's another story. That, like, your win rate is still a little higher than 50, but, mmm... Like, I, I would sit there going back and forth between one win away and two wins away for hours. Anyway, this is Riser Dragon, also known as Foolish Burial. And this was the other edition. Oh, Dark Eruption from, uh, oh, what set was that originally in? I think it Phantom was, Darkness. Yeah, it was Phantom Darkness. It's, uh, and I'm Armageddon taking the Maxi Challenge. <laughs> so he has the Imperm to negate me dumping Exodia's head and getting it back with Dark Eruption, but... I'm still gonna grab a couple of vanillas here because I've got a mallet. I can put them back. Like I'm far from stopped. Just because he cut me off from dumping and adding the head doesn't mean I can't draw it, and it doesn't mean that I don't have Plan B. And Plan B is, oh my goodness, I. Everyone knows I sing the praises of this card all the time anyway. But behold, love of all you chain on wheels. This card is dumb. Yeah, let's just attach the head of Exodia to the leg of Exodia. <laughs> Get a tuner. The left arm is connected to wait, the left leg is the right leg is connected to the what now? <laughs> to his face. Just gonna put back some stuff, that's okay. Get Exodia's left half into the deck and make a formula sync round to put the head in the graveyard. Oh, this is disgustingly fun. Hey, Dark Factory. You know what? So that that would be the legs. Oh, I, I guess the left half of his body. Here's the right leg. You've Here. literally got Exodia breakdancing. That's what this deck is. He's just like jumping in and out. There we go. On the opponent's face as now, you're slowly going back the up. The biggest pro right tip there. I have for anyone trying this at home. Always Dark mm -hmm. Eruption last. Because if you put the head in your hand before that, they'll scoop. And you won't get progress towards the title unless you actually win with Exodia's effect. The number of people who scoop, like, two seconds before I'm done is infuriating. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> so you make oh, sure that oh. you do whatever you can do to get the head in your hand you do last. Because they'll let your Dark Factories resolve, but if Dark Eruption resolves and put that head in your hand, as soon as you activate Dark Factory, they will scoop and you will cry. You just, your opponent literally just got served. It is Exodia breakdancing. That's what this deck is. <laughs> My god, that's... Now, wait till you see, like... Oh, you're probably going to turn this time. Yeah, well, I, I, got, I went second. Oh, you went, oh, okay, that's the only reason you're probably going to turn. <laughs> this is the final version of the deck, which I will then show the deck list of at the end. This is... I, I have no more changes to make to this pile. This is Sarayuja. This is Formula Synchron. This is Union Carrier. This is Shooting Riser Dragon. This is me just being like, I actually spent all my crystals on Exodia. I don't care. <laughs> so, for, for a title, what is the title that you get for different? The sealed one. 
the seal. But there is another one that I was working towards called Tactician that you get for using an alt win con 30 times. Ah, okay. Now, this is me digging for Summoner Monk and not getting it. So, like, I, I malleted back everything. I'm trying to see Treasure Panda or Summoner Monk, but Summoner Monk is preferable because it gives me four more stars. And so, here comes Mallet again. And this time, I'm gonna put the head back because I really just, I need to get to it. All right, into the void. Do I get to it? No. Popper up. Discard three. Lose a dark factory. That hurts. But finally get the monk. And he doesn't have the veiler. Which means I win. Huh. Good game. Yeah, as soon as Summoner Monk resolves, they didn't have Asher Veiler, the game is over. But the opponent gets to sit there and watch... Uh, yeah, they, they get to watch a show. They get to watch Exodia dancing. Yeah. The, the dance of the cards. Treasure Panda, always pulling out before I play something like Upstart, because why risk drawing the vanilla? You're literally like the rare hunter from the original yes. series. Yes, I am. <laughs> so again, I'm not going to play Upstart when I can still pull things out of my deck. You know what? I really wish I invested all my crystals to build this now. I would have taken. I would have tried to climb to plat one because I think the content would be hilarious. <laughs> Here's Stardust Charge Warrior, that draws a card. That's what happens when you have Summoner Monk, that extra four stars, just turns a formula into another draw. And those two, that's just Riser Dragon, that's head to the graveyard. And Dark Eruption is head to the hand. At this point, I'm just fishing for legs in that other arm, and they're in my graveyard, so I'm fishing for Dark Factory. Not having a whole lot of luck getting to it, but I am two Dark Factories away from winning this duel. And this is just the power of Dig because we have the OCG Forbidden List, approximately. We have the Master Duel Forbidden List, but... You also have no at, life. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You have the, the three chicken games and the popper up will never kill you. Hey, Dark Factory number one. Dark Factory number two. Which, in my defense, there was five cards left in my deck, and Syria to put three of them on the bottom. Yeah. Like, the, the fates of random number generation did make me work for it, but there it is. And there he is again. Whole game disrespecting the opponent by jumping in and out of play, and boom. It was tempting to attack him with Syria first, because he did pass that first turn. Oh, just as an extra slap in the face. Yeah, just to be like, oh, by the way, whack. 